intimate partner violence has become more common during these months of social isolation. I'm joined by Lee Martins from Kingston Interval House. So Lee, the reason I wanted to talk to you today, I saw a commercial and it's a way of letting someone know that things are not what they should be at your home. And they, they were talking about something fairly mundane, I think about a cheesecake recipe or something. Mm -hmm. Now, can you show us what the signal is? Um, yeah, so first of all, this came out of, I think, the Canadian Women's Foundation. Um, so they created this signal um, and it's pretty simple. You put your hand flat, you tuck your thumb, and then you bring your hand down. Um, and this is a way for a person who's in an abusive home to be able to signal um, for help. So with all of us doing video calls right now and with us being isolated at home, if you think of somebody who's isolating at home with their abuser, then they may not be able to verbalize that they need help, but this is a way for them to say to the person on the other end that there's something going on here, there's violence going on at home, and then that other person can hopefully investigate a bit further and, and look at next steps on how to help them. Okay, so and, I, and I'll, I'll get to that, what, what to do if you do see this signal, but I had a couple of concerns about this. For one thing, this is the only time I actually do this, use this format. I'm more of a telephone call mm -hmm. person or email or occasionally even a letter. So mm -hmm. is there an equivalent sign that if I got an email from someone, is there anything the equivalent? Um, this is the first that we've seen of this, but certainly um, I think if you talk to any sort of violence against women agency that over the years, um, women would come up with a signal on their own. So we often, as part of their safety planning, will say um, you can come up with a signal with your friend who calls every day or your family member, and it could be something that you say over the phone that's a phrase that they know means things have escalated and you need some sort of help. So this isn't sort of a new thing. This is just new in terms of the fact that we're all using um, our um, video calls more often. And so they were trying to come up with a way that you could signal through video calls. Um, but it certainly a lot of women have been doing this um, and we do this sort of safety planning um, quite often. Now, that's for the ones who are at Interval House. Um, what about people, because a lot of uh, my friends, uh, and I think what comes as the biggest surprise to me is people I've known for years, and finally they say, you know, yeah, I might mention I was interviewing you, for example, and they'll say, you know, my first marriage, that's what went on, and I am dumbfounded. I, I, I had no idea, and I mm -hmm. think a lot of, well, mostly women are the ones out there and nobody knows this is going on. Mm -hmm. um, so is there some way, that, like, give me an example of what they could say to their friend that would tell their friend um, you need help in a telephone call for, or an email. Could it be yeah. like, I've ordered flowers for my mother. Could it be like a, that kind of thing? Yeah, um, I mean, you might have heard um, that some people, you might have heard a woman that calls 911 and she sounds like she's ordering a pizza. Um, and then the 911 operator realizes that she's not actually doing that. But for her, it's not safe for her to say anything on her end. So that's her way of sort of asking for help. Um, the thing would be is that you would need to know what that safe code is. So hopefully that person would have reached out at some point and maybe said things aren't the best or or maybe you would think this email is so off base from what we normally email about, and then you can sort of investigate a bit further. Um, and asking sort of um, open-ended questions, or if you're calling and talking on the phone, you can ask yes or no questions, because um, you always wanna protect that person's safety. So if she's at home with the abuser, by asking these yes or no questions, she's just saying yes or no, but you're saying, do you need help? Should I be calling the police or should I be checking in more regularly? Um, is there something else I can be doing to help you? Um, always making sure that her safety comes first. Now, I started thinking of this through uh, today when I was uh, you know, preparing for this interview and I thought, I've got a friend who is a school teacher and she's doing a lot of these video conferences. She, she teaches seven and eight. And so she's doing video conferences all the time with her students. So mm -hmm. I said, if somebody did this while they were talking to you about doing their homework, would you know what it meant? Well, she knew what it meant only from watching the commercial, the same one that I had seen. But 
it sounds like this is not something that children can use to uh, report uh, child uh, child abuse or something going on in their home that's making them very uncomfortable. And then I started thinking about elder abuse. We just uh, talked to somebody about that uh, last week. So can you address that? Should should this be something that isn't just for domestic? It's it's beyond that. It's anybody who has experienced abuse. Is is does mm -hmm. that that make sense, Lee? Yeah, and I mean, um, certainly, like, obviously, our agency didn't come up with this. Um, this is the Canadian Women's Foundation. So I would refer people to go to their website, because I do see that they have a lot of information on there about how to further help somebody. Um, but again, it's something that it's not out there that much. I had somebody the other day say, I'm not sure what you're talking about, and I had to show them. Um, we're seeing it because, you know, I'm part of that. And so we get those types of emails. So I think the Canadian Women's Foundation is still trying to spread the message about it. So I can see that maybe in the future, it will be something that becomes more accessible for everybody. Um, but in terms of elder abuse, I, you know, if we can spread the awareness about it, then hopefully it can be used by anybody that needs it. Um, yeah. That 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 because it's a great idea and i just mm -hmm. started thinking wow this is such a good idea why isn't it, it better known mm -hmm. so it's a matter of time and then everybody will know this is this is one of the signals and uh so if i'm talking to a friend and they do that mm -hmm. what should i do so um again i refer people to the website because they have lots of great information they literally have um, a tips on what you can do um, but basically you want to try and check in with that person in a safe way to see what they need um, they may just be letting you know that there's some violence going on at home um, maybe upon further um, checking a bit further that you do find out that you need to call 911. Maybe it just means that you need to check in with them more often, that they need a bit more support and they're sort of letting you know that there's more going on than what most people see. So I think it's a matter of um, doing so, checking in with that person in a safe way and checking to see what they need. You don't want to make an assumption. You want to know what that person needs. They're reaching out because they want you to know what's going on but that doesn't necessarily mean that they immediately need the police there. It might mean that they want you to call once a week so that she can talk to somebody over the phone, a friendly voice. Um, yeah, or checking in more often through email or WhatsApp or other avenues. Okay, it's, uh, it's a great idea. It, it, mm -hmm. It's a super idea. I'd love to see this spread into other ways like emails, writing, phone calls, and all the rest so that we're all aware and then not um, just walk away saying, well, that was a funny thing to say and not mm -hmm. understanding why. Uh, and, and that's why I wanted to talk to you today. Yeah. Lisa. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, what's ha okay. What's happening at interval house these days? Um, well, we, um, we've been running, uh, as per usual, we've just made sure that we, um, made some changes in terms of public health recommendations to make sure that we ensure our staff and our women and children are safe. Um, but we've been running during this entire pandemic. Um, and we've been trying to spread the message that our services are still there. Um, we're here to support women and children leaving domestic violence, intimate partner violence. Um, so things have looked a little differently. Um, our outreach counseling is having to be done remotely, um, but the women are checking in regularly and our counselors are saying that they're actually having um, really good connections with women that way. Um, our shelter has made some changes to make sure that it's safe. We still run our second stage housing. Uh, we just have to do all those recommendations that most places would. Um, so our 24 hour crisis line, everything is running. And we've been trying to spread that message through social media that we're still here. We're still here to help. Our services are still here. Please give us a call if you need to. I'm hearing, and this is on the news on a national basis, that a number of these types of facilities have to turn people away more now than ever. Are you in, running into that in Kingston? Um, I, I don't know that we're running into that. And I think that there's lots of additional supports in place. So um, I would always say that even if you think our shelter might be full, please call because staff will make arrangements to find a safe place for you. 
And especially with additional resources right now, the government has been giving resources to shelters. Um, victim services has extra funds. So the, we're going to find somewhere safe for somebody to go, even if we happen to be full. And that's, that's whether it's a pandemic or not, that's always our policy. We want to make sure that we find somewhere safe for somebody. And what can members of the public do to help you? What do you need? Um, I think at this point, uh, we try and post on Facebook if we have a specific need. Sometimes we have somebody coming in that has something that they need. Um, we've been getting some people donating some canned goods and food like that, which has been helpful, especially for our um, residents over in second stage if they can't get out of the building as easily. Um, uh, certainly monetary donations are always helpful because then we can put that into the areas that it's needed. Um, you know, we've been getting some nice gift cards. People have been sending gift cards because they know that they can't always come to the facilities to drop it off. So then they're allowing us to go and get what we need. Um, and we've, uh, the community has been amazing for making us masks and dropping off hand sanitizers and cleaning products and stuff like that uh, because as we're all sort of realizing this is going to be something that is going to go on for a while and we're going to need to keep keep up with um, using all these things so all right good mm -hmm. suggestions appreciate your time today good talking yeah. to you thank you so much nice to talk to you mm -hmm.